Okay, happy Wednesday to everybody. Uh, so today we're going to do adding and subtracting mixed numbers, which really is just basically adding and subtracting fractions like we did on Monday. So if you needed some more practice, today is definitely the day. So if we had five and one fourth plus three and two thirds. Um, so you're just gonna add or subtract the whole numbers. So we're gonna add or subtract, in this case add five plus three and get eight. And then you're going to do the same, add or subtract the fractions. And then you'll just combine the answers together. So we need to do 1 fourth plus 2 thirds. So one thing that I didn't go over on Monday on purpose was, you know, when we talked about the whole chart thing that you could do with the 4 and the 3, for the denominators to do common denominators. Um, some of you can look at that and just say, you know, hey, the common denominator is 12, um, which it is. Um, but when you have a prime number, so as the denominator, so 3 is a prime number, unless 3 goes into 4, which it doesn't, you can just multiply them together. Now remember, multiplying together isn't always the greatest um, way to do it, and on the next example you'll see. But if it's a prime number, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, you know, a number that only that number works, or the number 1, you can just multiply, and that will be your common denominator. So I want to make both of these fractions have 12 as the denominator. So I'm going to erase that blue thing here. So how do I get the 4 to be a 12? Well I did times 3. So that means 4 times 3 is 12, 1 times 3 is 3. And then how do I get the 3 to become a 12 times 4? So 3 times 4 was 12, 2 times 4 is 8, and then I add the numerators, leave the denominator the same, and we just put it with the 8. Oops. And that's our answer. Okay, so should be just a kind of a small addition to Monday. There are a couple things that could happen different. So let's go over one of them. So let's do 4 5 eighths plus 6 and 5 6. Okay, so add the whole numbers or subtract. So I'm going to add the 4 and the 6, get 10. And then I'm going to do 5 eighths plus 5 6. So again, you could do the chart like we did on Monday to figure out Basically, you want to know the smallest number that works with the 8 and the 6. What's the smallest number that both an 8 and a 6 will go into or divide by? Um, and so I said the other day, you could multiply, but that's going to, you know, 8 times 6 is 48. Now you're going to have to deal with a lot bigger numbers and have to reduce a lot at the end. Um, but the smallest number that both 8 and 6 go into is a 24. 
So you could draw out the chart like I did the other day, um, but I think a lot of you can just kind of figure things out. So I just kind of, what I do is I just start with eight and I say, well, does six go into eight? No. What's the next number bigger than eight? Like eight times two is 16. Does six, 16 and six work? No. Eight times three is 24. Yeah, six works with 24. That's the way I kind of do it, but. Okay, so we did times three on this one. So five times three is 15. And on this one, we did times four. And five times four is 20. So when we add them together, we get an improper fraction. So this is the one like kind of thing I said that's a little different. If we were just adding and subtracting fractions, you could leave 35 over 24 as your answer. But because we're doing mixed numbers, you can't do an improper fraction inside of like with the whole number. So 10 and then 35 over 24, everything, it's right so far, there's just more to do. Okay, so what we need to do is convert the improper fraction into a mixed number. So I'm going to divide how many times does 24 go into 35 once. And on all of these, it's pretty much going to just be one. And then the remainder, so you can just subtract these. What's 35 minus 24? 11 and then the denominator stays the same okay now I need to combine it with that so what I end up with is 11 10 plus 1 and 11 24 okay so I think there's 20 problems today 10 of them will, will be adding, maybe two or three would be like this one. The rest of them should probably work out like the first example that we did. So if you're having to do this on a lot of them, you're probably doing something wrong, okay? So a couple of them, yes, but not all of them. All right, so subtracting works the same way. Let's look at a couple of those. So if I had, 10 and 2 thirds minus 1 and 1 sixth. I'm going to subtract the whole number, so 10 minus 1, 9. And then I'm going to do 2 thirds minus 1 sixth. So on the first example, when I talked about common denominator, I said, well, if it's a prime number, like the three is a prime number, um, you could multiply them. Um, and you could, but three goes into six. That's an even better situation. So six is our common denominator. I don't have to do anything to this fraction on the right side. And then on this one, I just did times two. Okay, so I get four. Four minus one is three. I do need to reduce right here. Don't just stick it up with the nine. You can reduce the fraction. So I can divide both of these by three. And get one half. Okay, so not a whole lot different, just always reduce. And if on the adding one, you could reduce it. You know, you got four over eight, you get that reduces to one half also. So, okay. All right, now here's gonna be like the hardest version of the subtraction. So nine and one fourth minus three, oops. and five sixths. 
Okay, so starts off the same. Subtract the 9 and the 3. 6. And then I'm going to do 1 fourth minus 5, 6. Okay, and so what's the smallest number that works with 4 and 6? Okay, that would be a 12. So we could do times 3, we get 3, and then I could do times 2, we get 10. So here's where the challenge comes in, 3 minus 10, can't do that. Okay, so kind of over here on the side I'm going to do a problem that relates to it but if you had you know 284 minus 136 and you start off the problem you would do 4 minus 6 and well that doesn't work so you borrow and then 14 minus 6 is an 8 7 minus 3 is 4, 2 minus 1 is 1, and we did a subtraction problem, but we had to borrow. So we have to borrow like on this kind also. Um, and so this 1 fourth we rewrote down here as the 3 over 12 or 3 twelfths. So we're going to borrow from the 9. And here's the thing we get the only kind of borrowing you've probably ever done before is in this kind way over here and you know the 8 became a 7 and then you just stick a 1 right there um, and what I want to kind of point out is this you had a 4 at the beginning and then when you borrowed you put a 1 there and it became a 14 and then you did 14 minus 6 is 8 so really how much did you borrow if it was a one, excuse me, a four, and it turned into a fourteen, didn't you borrow ten? That's how you got fourteen. Okay, so we get in the habit of well, we just stick a one right there. If you borrow one from the going back to the fraction one, if you borrow one from the nine and put an eight, okay, and I'm going to do the wrong thing, and you put a 1 right there by the 13 by the 3 and make it a 13 you can't do that that's wrong a hundred percent of the time it will never be correct because we didn't we borrowed one from the 9 and made an 8 okay and the other day we talked about we can write the number 1 in a ton of different ways oops wrong color um, you know, we, we wrote down um, on Monday, you could do the number 1 as 3 over 3. You could do the number 1 as 10 over 10. You could do the number 1 as 8 over 8. So 57 over 57. All of these are just different versions of the number 1. So, going back to the problem, when I borrowed 1, how I want to write the 1 is really 12 over 12, because 12 is the denominator. So when you do that, you end up with 15 over 12. And then you'll never have to do anything to the second fraction. Okay, so if the denominator was a 6, you would do 6 over 6. If the denominator was a 14, you would do 14 over 14. Whatever the denominator is, that's what you're going to do right here for the number 1. The other thing, and some of you may or may not have noticed it, but if you add those two together, you're going to get 15. That's always going to work. So if you just add these two numbers together, 15 
over 12, you're going to be right as well. Okay? All right. So we stick the 5 over 12 up here, except for one thing happened that we didn't know was going to happen until we worked out the problem. At the very beginning, I did 9 minus 3 is 6. Well, now the 9 is an 8. So don't have a 6 right here. I have a 5 because 8 minus 3 is 5. So definitely the hardest kind of problem. Maybe you'll have two of them on your assignment today. So don't you shouldn't be borrowing on a ton, okay? Two, three at the most. The rest of them should be like the example where you just subtract the numbers, subtract the fractions, and you're good to go, okay? All right, so work out these fractions. I know that a lot of you have a hard time with them, and that's okay. We just got to be able to deal with them at least to a, a some level. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have questions. Email me. Send me a message on Canvas, whatever you need to do. Um, this is the work that you, I should see for your problems. Okay, so for like this problem, this right here, you know, maybe without some of the arrows, that, but I should see that. If I don't, then you're not going to get credit for those problems. Okay, I did it in my head, can't be an answer. You got to write stuff down. All right, okay, so look at the worksheet if you want to print it, and then do the work on there you can you don't have to um, just make sure you put mult or adding and subtracting mixed numbers on the top of your paper obviously your name um, and then make sure your work is really clean in terms of where the numbers are look put a box around it like I just did and then box your answer I shouldn't have to hunt around the paper for where's number eight kind of thing it should be obvious all right good luck guys you can do it